I hope you're having fun with your pencil tool, creating all kinds of arcs and lines and, you know, geometric shapes and all this fun stuff. But there's a whole other set of tools, a whole other set of options that I want to show you here with your pencil tool. If we move our eye over to the properties panel, notice that the properties panel has changed as well. And this is an important thing to realize or understand here inside Flash. Once again, depending on the tool that I have selected inside the properties panel, we're going to get different things happening on screen, specifically inside the properties interface and also down at the bottom of the toolbox. So once again, I'm going to flip over to the pencil tool. And again, that properties panel changes. So now we have a whole bunch of settings here inside the properties panel to explore. First of all, we have our color. It's important to understand that when we're working with the pencil tool, we're actually creating outlines or strokes. That's vitally important to understand. So what I can do here is I can come and I can change the stroke color indicated there by the pencil icon. So all the way along here, we've been drawing in black. Maybe I decide now I want to draw in red, you know, something like this. And now I'm going to get these geometric shapes appearing in red, of course, rather than the default of black. So that's kind of cool. You can go and monkey around with different colors. That's great and very easy, very straightforward as well. That was supposed to be a circle. Anyway, there we go. Something like that. Now, notice that the paint bucket, the fill, it has that red diagonal line through it. That indicates that there's no fill color set. We cannot set a fill color as we're using the pencil tool again, because the pencil tool is creating strokes. But what we can do is we can increase the stroke weight or the stroke thickness. So the default is one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to crank this guy up maybe to, oh, I don't know, maybe to eight or, or just above eight and give that guy a try and see how that turns out. So now we're creating even thicker lines and strokes and shapes and things like this, right? I think it's much easier actually to type in a pixel value. Maybe I'll try three and hit enter on my keyboard and then give that guy a try, you know, something like this, pretty straightforward, right? Okay, so hopefully that's, that's very, very easy here. Hopefully you're having lots of fun here. Give me a second here. I'm gonna switch over to maybe a, a darker green and maybe I'll reduce my, my stroke height or my stroke thickness down to two. Now we have some other options as well. How about the line style? Up until this point, we've been creating solid lines. Maybe I want to create some dashed lines, you know, something like this. Or maybe, you know, a triangle or a rectangle that uses a dotted outline instead of, or a dashed outline, sorry, I should say, rather than a solid line. But of course, I could go dotted if I wanted to. I'm going to drop down my style drop down menu and switch over to dotted. And maybe I'll change my color here once again, maybe back to blue, something like this. And then maybe go with dotted lines, something like this. You can have so much fun with this stuff, creating your objects. Really in the real world, obviously, we would use this to create our interfaces or add objects to our flash properties and so on. There's a whole bunch of different line styles that we can use here. As you can see, ragged, stippled, hatched. You're welcome to go and try all these guys out. I'm not going to sit here and, you know, walk you through every single one of them. I think you're more than capable on your own to, to try these guys out. So go for it there. Now, if you are really, really adventurous, what you could do is you could get into creating your own custom line styles. You could click on this little pencil icon here to edit the stroke style. That brings you into the stroke style editor. I'm not going to go into crazy detail here because it does get a little nutty, but I want to make you aware of it at least. Okay, so have fun with that guy. Okay. Now, not to be a bore, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back to solid. By the way, we also have hairline there. You can check that guy out. I'm going to go to solid and maybe I'll change my color here. Maybe I'll go to maybe sort of an orange color here. And we also have some other options here down towards the bottom. We have cap. And what cap is really is the end of the line there. If I zoom in on the end of the line there, that's the cap, right? So the end of the line, how we're going to treat the end of the line. And notice the end of the line has sort of that. I don't know what you want to call that, sort of that rounded end, I guess you could say, that's being determined right here. So I could say none, for instance, and that would give me sort of the straight 90 degree cap, something like that. Or I could go square and we could try that guy out, something like this, right? Now, I know about a lot of this stuff already because I'm a heavy Illustrator user and you can set the same options over inside Illustrator when you're messing around with strokes. So 
Maybe you're the same. Maybe you've done a quite a lot of this work inside Illustrator. It's the, really the same idea. I'm going to switch back to round. We also have the join. And what this is, is when we have an angle, you know, something like this. How are we going to treat that angle? Now, give me a second. I'm just going to select all and delete. So again, when a line changes direction, how do we want to handle that direction change? And again, we have this round, sort of roundish effect happening there. What we can do is we can change that maybe to a bevel instead, maybe something like, that wasn't quite a good example. There we go, something like that, right? That's a beveled corner. This is getting really, really precise though. I mean, you know, I'm showing you this stuff so you're aware of it. You might be sitting there going, I don't care how my corners are handled. But anyway, or maybe you're sitting there going, yeah, this is exactly what I'm after. So there's some examples of, well, there's a bevel, there's the round, and this one over here, that's your miter corner there. Okay, something like that. So a perfectly 90 degree corner. You can set your miter limit. We also have a smoothing option there as well. And that determines how much smoothing is going to be applied when we're creating our lines. Okay, so I definitely encourage you to explore all these different settings that I've been showing you with the pencil tool. Get comfortable with the pencil tool. Now, next up, I want to push things a little bit further with our drawing tools here inside Flash.